Alright, let's do this. Here are 50 Photoshop tips, tricks and shortcuts that will make your editing life easier. If you want to instantly create a black filled layer mask, simply hold down the Alt key and click on the layer mask icon. Thus, we are creating a black layer mask and by painting in with a white brush, we can reveal the underlying layer. To quickly blend different exposures, you can use Apply Image. Make sure the brightest image is at the bottom, turn off the visibility of the second layer and also apply a layer mask on it. With the layer mask selected, go to Image and here we are choosing Apply Image. Without changing anything, hit OK. Turning back on the layer, you can see we have nicely blended those two images. Usually the layer mask is linked to its parent layer. That means if I move this one around, the layer mask will move with it. You can click this little chain icon to separate both layers. This means the parent layer can be moved without the layer mask changing its position. You can also move the layer mask around without changing the parent layer. To get a more precise view of the layer mask, you can hold down the Alt key and click the layer mask. And this will bring you in the layer mask view. Here you can see everything that's black will not be visible while everything that is white will later be visible. If you want to quickly deactivate the layer mask, simply hold down the shift key and click on it. Doing this again will activate the layer mask once more. To create a glow effect, create a new layer and on this new layer switch the blending mode from normal to soft light. Then grab the brush tool by pressing B, make sure to drop the brush opacity to around 10%, otherwise this effect might be too strong and set the foreground color to something that fits the scene. In this case, we are working with the sunset shot, so I'm going with a warm color tone. And then with a very, very soft brush, I'm going to paint in some subtle glow. This is without the soft light layer, this is with the new layer. You can also make this effect a lot stronger by changing the blending mode from soft light down to hard light. Now the glow is much more visible. Blending two or more images together, for example for car light trails or city lights can be a great effect. This is easily done. Simply place the bright image below and the dark exposure on top of it. Now change the blending mode to either lighten, screen or color dodge. Once you change the blending mode, you can see the brighter pixel appearing on top of the bright exposure. Of course, this will not always be perfect, so be prepared to mask out certain areas. If you want to dodge or burn the image, again apply a new layer and for the dodging and burning you can use either the overlay blending mode or the soft light blending mode, with soft light being a little bit weaker, so I tend to use overlay. To dodge things, grab the brush and set the foreground color to white. Also again make sure the brush opacity is at a lower amount so this effect won't get too strong. Then simply brush over the area you want to brighten up. If you want to make things darker, instead of a white foreground color set it to black and again brush over the area you want to darken. You can change the colors of objects by creating a new layer and switching the blending mode to hue or color. Let's go with hue for this one. I have picked the green color tone since I want to make the grass look fresh. So with the brush and the green foreground color, I'm simply going to brush over the grass on the hue layer. And thus we just changed the object's color. Over the past few years, Adobe has made it a lot easier to create complex selections. For example, if I want to select the sky, simply go to select and here we are choosing sky. This will give you a pretty accurate sky selection. You can use a similar setting to select a subject. Again, go to select and here we are choosing subject. A very handy shortcut to quickly select specific luminance ranges is Ctrl Alt and numbers 2 to 7. So let's say I want to select the brighter parts. I'm going to hold down Ctrl, Alt and push the 2 key. This will select the brighter areas of the image and I can use that selection for example to dodge or burn things or simply add stronger color tones with an adjustment layer. If you want to select a specific color, this also can be done via the select menu. Let's go in there. Here we're choosing color range. 
With the eyedropper tool, we are simply going to click on the color we want to select. Now you can play around with the fuzziness to expand or contract this selection. With that selection active, if you're creating a layer mask with it, so let's say brightness and contrast, this selection will get added as a layer mask on that adjustment layer. This means you can target this specific area with the adjustment layer. So let's make this area brighter. With the gradient map adjustment layer, you can color grade your photos in a similar way to split toning. Make sure to change the blending mode of the gradient map adjustment layer to soft light or overlay depending on how strong you want it and also drop down the opacity. Next, set up the colors by clicking on this gradient. On the left side, we do have the shadows. So here, let's create some dark blue shadows. And on the right side, you have the highlights. So let's make them warm. However, if you want, you can add as many points as you want by simply clicking in here. So here we have a point for the midtones. And let's say we want to cool them down. So again, giving them a cold color tone just like that. And once we're done, just hit OK. And thus, you can color grade your images. The gradient map adjustment layer can also be used to quickly create black and white images. So under the gradients, go into basics and choose the first black and white gradient. The benefit of using this method is, again, you can nicely adjust the contrast of the image by playing around with the gradient. If you want to quickly add some subtle warmth to the image, go into the adjustment layers and here choose photo filter. Here you will get over the bunch of different presets and you can even play around with the density to make it weaker or stronger, depending on what you want. If you want to create some vignetting, simply use the gradient adjustment layer. First, click on the gradient. Since we want the vignetting to be dark, we are going to set up the color and make it black. There might be some strange colors going on, so make sure to set the second color to black as well. Then hit OK. To create a vignetting effect, set the style to radial. Of course, we want it coming from the outside in. That means we need to reverse that layer. This is way too heavy, so we are going to play around with the scale, increasing it slightly. Finally, hit OK and then just play around with the opacity of the adjustment layer. Using the selective color adjustment layer, you can finally adjust the colors of the highlights, the midtones and the shadows. Under the drop down menu, you will find whites, neutrals and blacks. Whites for the highlights, neutrals for the midtones and blacks, of course, for the shadows. So let's head into the whites. And to give the highlights some more warmth, I'm simply going to bring up the yellow tones. We can also add some magentas. To adjust the luminance, we can use the black slider. Bringing it down will make it brighter, while bringing it up will make it a little darker. Let's try to adjust the shadows with the blacks. We can give the image some more punch by just increasing the black sliders and thus making the shadows darker. Also, we can give the shadows some more blue tone by increasing the Zion slider. A very cool way to add some more contrast is the black and white adjustment layer. Once we add this, of course, first the image will be black and white. However, we can set the layer to overlay or soft light and drop the opacity. Then make use of those sliders to add more contrast. For example, we can make the sky darker by playing around with the blue slider and just bringing it down. If you want to make the grass brighter, simply use the yellow and the green slider and pump it up. This will give your image some more punch. Using the motion blur effect, you can add awesome long exposure effects to the sky. To set this up, I'm going to select Select Sky, hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V to get a sky layer. And by holding down the Ctrl key, I'm clicking on the thumbnail. This will get us the selection back. And with that selection, I'm going to filter, blur, motion blur. Make sure the angle is set to zero to get a natural looking effect and play around with the distance. The higher you go, the longer the streaks will be. So don't go too high. And here we have a nice long exposure effect. If you want to have a more natural looking long exposure effect, use the path blur filter. 
Again, I have my sky selection layer. With that selected, I'm heading to filter, blur gallery, and here I'm choosing path blur. With path blur, you can draw different paths along which the motion blur will be added. So let's get rid of the first one right here. I want the clouds to go in this direction and you can even add some curves to it. And thus you can just add a few different directions in which the clouds are heading. Once done, just hit OK. For the classic Orton Glow effect, duplicate your background layer by pressing Ctrl J. Then go to Filter, Blur, here we're choosing Gaussian Blur. And depending on how strong you want that, you should play around with the radius. I don't want to go too crazy, so I'm using a lower radius, just like that. Once you're done, just hit OK. Now all we have to do is switch the blending mode from normal to lighten and then play around with the opacity. And this way you can add some very cool Orton Glow effect. If you want to quickly add rain to the image, add a new layer, hit Shift F5 to fill it with black, hit OK, go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise, make sure Monochromatic is activated and then play around with the amount. The lower the amount, the less intense the rain will be. So let's add just a little bit of rain here. And once we set up this thing, hit OK. Next, again go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. Here for a natural looking rain effect, we want to choose a very steep angle. I don't really want to have the rain come from the side, so I'm almost going with 90 degrees. That looks good, so let's hit OK. Once we have set up this, all we need to do to blend those images together is to change the blending mode from normal to screen. I hope it's still visible after the YouTube compression, but you can pretty clearly see it in the clouds. If you're done editing your image, a good way to sharpen it is to go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. Bring the threshold down to zero and play around with the radius. I would recommend a very low amount because otherwise it looks very, very strange. I'm usually going with 0.2. The amount can be raised quite a bit. Then, once this is done, hit OK. Another cool way of sharpening your images is to duplicate your background layer. Then we're going to Filter, Other, High Pass. This will help detect edges in the image. And by playing around with the radius, you can set the amount of sharpening. I, again, wouldn't go too high. A low radius is good enough. So let's just go with one for now. Hit OK. Now to apply the sharpening effect, I'm going to change the blending mode from normal to overlay. Once I deactivate the image, you can see the difference. To quickly replace the sky, simply go to edit, here choose sky replacement. Photoshop offers a bunch of different skies to choose from. Once you have the right sky, you can further adjust the replacement with those settings right here. Once everything is set up, just hit OK. You can still adjust the sky replacement since everything is stored in a group. Deactivating this group will get you back to the original image. If you're interested in more AI related editing, you can find a bunch of different AI filters under the neural filters. For that, go to Filter, Neural Filters. Adobe has added a lot of different things for different kinds of photography. For landscapes, for example, you can try turning your images into a winter scene with the landscape mixer. Simply bring up the winter slider in this case. Once you're happy with the adjustments, just hit OK. One more cool thing you can find under the filter menu is the Camera Raw filter. This will take your image to the Camera Raw editor. Here you can develop the image like you would do in Lightroom for example. So let's say you want to add some more texture and clarity to make the image pop. You can do that just fine right here. Keep in mind, if you're not editing a raw image, you don't have that much possibilities in here, since the image will look strange quite fast. And again, once you're done, hit the OK button. If you want to quickly clean up the layers menu, select them all and hit Ctrl E to merge everything into a single layer. If you want to keep the existing layers, you can get that done by hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. Photoshop will create a new merge layer from all the layers below it, while keeping the layers as well. 
Duplicating that layer, as I said earlier, can be done by hitting Ctrl J. Use the clipping mask for targeted adjustments just for the layer below it. So let's say I want to make this layer a little brighter. I'm creating a new brightness and contrast adjustment layer and I'm holding down the Alt key and click between those two layers. This way, this brightness and contrast adjustment layer will only affect the layer directly beneath it. So let's bring up the brightness. To deactivate the clipping mask, I'm again holding down the Alt key and click between those two. And now watch how the whole image gets brighter. Spoiler things, especially like sensor dust, can be easily removed with the spot healing brush. So let's pick it up right there and just brush over the things you want to remove. This also can be used for smaller objects. If you are specifically looking for sensor dust, you can use a curves adjustment layer and pump up the contrast. We're going to bring a point up here and then bring a point down here. This way we're getting an extreme S-curve but this will make all the sensor spots very, very visible. And this is how you can easily get rid of them. Looking at this, I should probably clean my camera once in a while. If you want to remove bigger objects, I would suggest grabbing the lasso tool by pressing L, then make a rough selection around the object you want to remove. Once you got the selection, hit Shift F5, choose Content Aware under Contents and hit OK. Especially for mountain landscape shots, stretching the image vertically can make the photo more dramatic. To do that, I'm simply hitting Ctrl T and then I'm stretching it vertically. Of course, it's important to not overdo it, otherwise it's way too obvious. But stretching it a little bit vertically really helps. If you want to only stretch a certain part, you can use the rectangular marquee tool and select the area you want to stretch just like that and again hit Ctrl T and only this area will be affected by the transformation. So let's scale it up. If you want to have somewhat of a more natural scaling effect, I would suggest to use the Perspective Warp tool. For that, go to Edit, Perspective Warp. First, you want to create a grid. In this case, I want to create a grid around the mountain in the distance. Then we are going to fill the rest of the image with those boxes. And always make sure those connect to each other. Otherwise, it might give you strange looking areas. And let's draw one around the mountain in the foreground and the flowers as well. Once you set up the grid, hit the war button. Now I want to make the upper mount a little higher. I'm holding down the shift key and click on this line to select both of those points and then just drag them up. I can do the same thing with the lower line, but here of course I'm dragging it down. Just like that. Once I'm done, I'm hitting the check icon right there. And here we have the upscaled mountains. Guides are a great tool to help with composition, but also keeping your horizons straight. To create guides, First, make sure the ruler on top and on the left are active by pressing Ctrl R. Then click on the ruler and drag the guide to the desired position. This way you can nicely check the horizon of your images. If the landscape photo you are working with is distorted, you can use warp transformation to make it level again. I would suggest to create a guide to get a rough idea for the horizon, then hit Ctrl T to bring up the transformation, right click in the image and choose Warp. Now by left clicking through the image, you can adjust different areas of it. And thus you can try to level the image again. If there are unwanted gaps due to cropping, activate the Content Aware Fill box. And when you're cropping the next time, Photoshop will fill the gap automatically. Clicking on that small ruler icon up there will activate the straighten mode. Once active, draw a line along the horizon and Photoshop will level the image for you. The cropping tool, just like in Lightroom, offers you different grids. This will help with image composing. You will find the grids right next to the straighten tool under this drop-down menu. 
you have a smaller grid, diagonal grid, triangle grid, golden ratio grid and golden spiral grid. And finally, let's talk about the brush tool. The quickest way to set up the brush size and hardness is by holding down the Alt key while dragging the mouse up and down or left and right. So hold down the Alt key, click the right mouse button and drag the mouse left or right to increase the brush size. For the hardness, hold down the Alt key, click the right mouse button and drag it up or down to adjust the hardness of the brush. There are millions of free brushes online. Make use of them. For example, with custom brushes, you can add clouds, light rays, fog, snow or stars to your photos. In this case, I have added some light rays to the image by just using a custom brush. If you want to be more precise with the brush tool, activate the crosshair for the brush cursor. Under the edit menu, go to preferences. From this menu, choose the cursor's point and then just show crosshair in brush tip. Once checked, just hit OK. And now you have a tiny crosshair in the center of the brush. If you have used the brush tool a lot, you might notice it doesn't create a perfect stroke. This is probably due to spacing. To fix that, click that folder icon up here and make sure to drop the spacing down all the way. When creating a brush stroke now, it should be perfect. In the brush settings, you can change the orientation of the brush. Right now, the light ray is coming from the wrong direction. That's not good. In this case, click on the brush setup right here and spin this circle around. So by turning it 45 degrees, I have set up the brush in the right direction and can safely paint in some light rays. Alright, and that is it for the 50 Photoshop tips, tricks and shortcuts. I hope this was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.